So I have been, as a lot of us have been, hotly anticipating this release right here, the Super Goop Protect Tint Daily SPF Tint. There's a long and storied history on Super Goop's complexion products because I really loved their first one, the tinted SPF, but it came in four shades and I could wear like three of them. It was a shade range that ignored so much of the population and thank God the conversation has really pivoted since then to be more inclusive and this does seem to be I don't know, I'll take another look at it, but it seems to be a more inclusive shade range. It's certainly not like the new Ilio one, 2024, okay. But I thought that it would be interesting to compare this with the CL Tint and Protect because they are both SPF 50 foundations. So I'm gonna do one on one side of my face, one on the other. We're also going to play with the new CL blushes because why not? They are new, they are beautiful, and this is a really good opportunity to try them. And I also, I made a big Sephora order and in that order was this new Milk Makeup Kush Lip Oil in their cookie dough scent or whatever. But this is mainly going to be about the complexion products. So let's go ahead and jump in. Now, the CL I'm intimately familiar with. I have been using it since it came out basically and it made my end of the year lists of fantastic things that I love and I need a hair clip. Okay, cute. <laughs> We're gonna start with a little bit of skin prep here. I am going to start with this new Rose Hyaluronic Face Mist from Iconolab. Iconolab is a beautiful organic boutique skincare company that I've been in love with for years. They make my favorite renewal face oil and they just sent me this new Rose Face Mist and it's delicious, okay? First of all, the packaging, delicious, okay? There's no argument there. It smells like Rose, it's got a lot of really lovely things in it and I just enjoy it. It's just a really good experience. I'm gonna put that back here so I don't keep knocking it over. The stack that you see back there are all of the new Guerlain blushes and all of the powder blushes that I've pulled from my collection and swatched against them for a comparison for the next video to see whether the Guerlain $55 blushes are different enough to warrant you actually buying them. So the next thing I'm going to put on here because I actually haven't moisturized since I washed my face is the Thrive Bigger Than Beauty Defying Gravity deep hydration moisturizer. When I was tagging this, when I uploaded my last video, I realized there are two. There is the deep hydration moisturizer and then there is like the lightweight moisturizer. And I'm so glad they sent me the deep hydration moisturizer because it is lovely. It is lovely. It doesn't smell like anything. It's really, really lovely under makeup. It's actually super hydrating. I did do another step of actives last night. I just did a little bit of glycolic and boop. We got ourselves a fresh candidate right there and we're just going to ignore her, okay? She's just going to be there until she isn't because believe it or not, if you leave something like that alone, it will go away. All right, I'm not sure if I can resist just going straight in with the super goop. Like that's where I'm at right now. I just need to know. And I got this in the shade 14N, so we shall see. What does she look like? Ooh, looks like I nailed it. That's gonna be great, I think. So we'll do this on the right side of my face. It does look to be thicker than the CL. It doesn't immediately drip when you put it on your skin in a swatch. Huh, okay, we're gonna need quite a bit more than that. Yeah, she's a lot thicker. Let me show you the CL next to it. See, the CL is not as viscous, it'll just drip. And that is in shade three for the CL. So this is one side of my face with just the super group. It really doesn't go a long way. It really doesn't go a long way, that is wild. There's nothing tacky or primer-y really about any of the skin prep that I use. So it's not like it's making it soak up, you know, and like go matte. It's just not super, super spreadable, which is fine. It's just something to note. It's got a little bit of luminosity to it, but not much in the way of blurring. It's pretty. Let's just put it in perspective against the CL. It is slightly lighter than the CL, but that's never proven to be a huge issue. If you swatch all your foundations against each other, I guarantee you, you'll experience a lot of different colors and you're like, wow, I can't believe all of those work on me, but they will. Ugh, immediately, immediately. I am just so much more pleased by the CL. Look at that. Look at just how blurred and smooth it looks with no more actual coverage. It's really, really beautiful. It's easy 
to dismiss something that's like a lightweight skin tint. And I think that the reason that people pay attention to it or paid attention to it initially is because it does have such a high SPF claim. And of course, it's still not enough to be your entire SPF because Charlotte Parlor has done plenty of demonstrations of how much foundation you would actually have to wear in order for a mineral SPF to form a physical barrier that would be effective in sun but use the rest of that super goop. I had a little bit left on my hand and we'll just cover that little spot on my chin here. I mean, I'm sorry. There's no contest for me immediately. This is just, I think it's got a little bit of iridescence to it, just enough that it is highlighting texture and the CL for being even more lightweight is just so much more elegant, blurring and flattering on the skin. It's more hydrating, it's more serum -y. yeah, yeah, sorry. Sorry, super goop. That's just, that's just no contest. I mean, it like just looks, this looks so much better. <laughs> well, you can stop watching the video now, unless you're just here for entertainment purposes, but yeah, the links will be below and the CL is definitely the one that I prefer. Hands down, hands down. All right, I'm gonna zoom through with a little bit of concealer and then we will start going in directly with the CL blushes. Okay, we are looking at something that looks pretty nice and then we are looking at something that looks perfected for about the same amount of coverage. I think that the CL looks like it has more coverage, but it's because it's more consistent. It's more blurring on the skin. And I think it's a little more flattering because it's like on the slightly deeper side of what I can get away with from a foundation match. And so you wouldn't clock this in person, but this just looks better because tan always looks a little healthier on me, you know? So. There's our comparison. I tried to keep it really minimal on the concealer. All right, so Ciel has put out these blushes in the past and there were several other shades, but these are their new ones. These are January and June. January being kind of a snow bunny pink and June being kind of a tan brown. So I skipped over bronzer so that A, you could see what these look like in all sincerity on my face without anything else obscuring them. But also this is kind of giving a little bit of bronzer or isn't it? I want to make sure that we use it for a bronzer if it works as a bronzer. Now it does remind me of something. If I can locate it. Yes. Reminds me of Coco from Salt New York. Just want to swatch them next to each other. Yep. Yeah. If you have Coco, you probably don't need the CL. That's just full stop. I mean, the CL blushes do also have SPF 50 in them. So I think that that is an important distinction, but they are virtually the exact same color. And I truly don't think I own anything that insane level of pink. That's almost like Glossier Puff, although Puff is a little bit kind of chalkier looking. This is definitely more translucent, but it is very vividly pigmented. So I think we're going to go in with June first and then top with January. I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> I'm going to go in with it on a sponge because I don't know how this is going to go. I have used these. I have, but I'm not sure that I fully have my thoughts together yet. I do love a brown blush though, especially because it works on so many people. It can just be a really fun thing to experiment with because it's just an uncommon kind of color. It's definitely got some rosiness to it, but it also has a lot of depth to it. And this formula is also very serum-y, so it builds slowly enough. Some people have complained that it doesn't wear for very long. And that has been the experience that I've had also that has kept me from like wholesale recommending it the way that I wholesale recommend the foundation the skin tint that they did, but they are really beautiful. And who knows, maybe they've improved the longevity with this release. I have no idea, but it's definitely making me look tanner, but in like a cool way. I feel like this is going to work really beautifully on olive skin tones and like medium skin tones. It might be just a little bit, the word is not ashy, muddy. It looks a little bit muddy on me. So hopefully pulling in some honest to God bronzer that has a little bit more warmth to it and pulling in January on the tops of my cheeks, it's gonna bring some more believable life back into my face. But like, this is why we play the game. It's not giving bronzer and it's not giving the most flattering color on me. It just kind of looks like I used the wrong color of foundation. And for me, that's just giving mud. It's just giving mud a little bit. So we'll see how much we can save it. It's just me. Help. All right, January. I 
I do think it's cool that they came out with such disparate shades though. Because I feel like it's not a situation where you're like, oh, do I need both necessarily? Like one is probably going to appeal to you a lot more than the other one. Oh, that did kind of help though. That's a beautiful color. I feel like it would also go really well over an actual bronzer color that's like more flattering on me because it is such a pure color. It's like a flamingo pink, you know? It does, for me, need a little bit more complexity to look believable, but at the same time, it's a fun thing to have in your repertoire because sometimes you really do just want that beautiful pop. So I'm gonna use the Glossier bronzer, in this case, in Sale. And it's going to hopefully create a little bit of a more believable color in the bronzer area of my cheeks without, I don't know, making things look cakey and too made up because I do, I just kind of look really low contrast in a very like fake tan sort of way right now. And this has a good bit of yellow in it by comparison. And that's kind of the tone that we need to bring back into my skin right now is golden. We need golden. That's helping. I think that's helping. It's very, very subtle. It's a super, super light color. All right, I mean, I'm tan, I'm tan. We need like some more concealer or something to balance this out because it's definitely giving, not pink face, but like bronze face a little bit. Just a little bit of contrast in the areas that should have contrast. I might even use a little bit of highlighter just to bring some light catching texture back into the high points of my skin because yeah, this is all looking very, fake tan all over my face kind of thing. Not my favorite look on me. But I do get the feedback a lot of times that people really enjoy watching me troubleshoot. So that's what you're watching right now in real time. Like, am I gonna go in with all five of my typical bronzers? No, because we're starting at bronze. <laughs> my lips do need a little bit of like treatment here. I'm gonna use that Thrive lip treatment again. It's just clear. It has like a little bit of a minty scent, but it's like not minty on the lips. It's not giving plumping. I'm gonna powder a little bit. Yes, I am. My goodness gracious. Wow, I am so tan. I would say that June is, is not my color. I'm just gonna go ahead and say June's not my color. Using my Kosas here. Hmm. I mean, it's not a bad thing to look tan. It's just very unfamiliar to me right now <laughs> that I look so tan and I really think that it all happened when I put on June. <laughs> so, I do think we're losing the blush already. Ciel, I do feel like it's already fading. I just have this urge to put on powder blush because it's like, where did it go? Where did it go? I don't know. So let's do a little bit of highlighter and then I'm going to throw some stuff on my eyes. That's kind of nice. I'm using the Givenchy, giving a little bit of like icy. They're probably going to be people who are like, Kaki, this is a great look for you. You know, you look great when you're tan. Thank you, but also, <laughs> I like to feel a little bit more like I'm in control and this just happened without my consent. I, I can't really like trace back to the moment when it happened, <laughs> you know? I think this calls for like a Ciel de Ray moment. I don't want a lot of glitter on my skin right now. I just want things to look kind of all this hybrid texture. Ciel de Ray is a souffle eyeshadow from Surat that is my true one and done eyeshadow. It just goes on so seamlessly on my skin tone and the formula is actually a fantastic base, but like I don't have to put anything on with it if I don't want to. Obviously, that's what a one and done is. <laughs> Super chill. And I <laughs> I am gonna go in with my Skin by Kim. I want y'all to know, like, I can't even monetize Skin by Kim. I just like it that much. Like, there's an incentive for sure to talk about products that you can monetize, like if they're at Sephora or something. It's just like easier because you know people are probably more likely to buy it because it's like a retail store that people are used to buying makeup from. Whereas if you talk about Skin by Kim, you're like, you need to go to Skin by Kim's website kind of thing. But I don't care because I like it so much that I just keep going for it. So I'm gonna go for this kind of medium tone here here and that's gonna be my little crease moment. I don't want any glitter on my eyes today. I know that that's crazy go nuts for me, but I just don't want it. I want something really 
pretty and natural looking to go with this kind of tan complexion. I feel like if I go too far tan and then I start throwing glitter on my eyes, the made upness happens so fast. I feel like my head doesn't go with my body, you know? So we're just gonna go with neutrals on top of Ciel de Ray. Ciel de Ray is going to be the most shimmer texture that we even get out of this. She's so smoothing. She's so blurring. I literally have a pimple in my eyebrow. I, know I said I don't want any glitter, but I kind of want like a little glitter. Like maybe Space Cowboy? Just a little bit. It's hard for me to use Ciel de Ray without using Urban Decay Space Cowboy because it just completes it. it. They just look like they go together. I don't know y'all. I just feel like my whole face is the same color. Okay, I'm going to do eyeliner, mascara, and brows, and then we'll come back. We're gonna talk lips. We're gonna talk comparisons. We're gonna talk final thoughts. I'll see you in a minute. I mean, it looks really cute. <laughs> it's a very skin, skin, skin kind of look where I didn't end up bothering too much with the eyes, you know, going outside my comfort zone or anything. And the mascara and eyeliner just really lent themselves to something very pretty and effortless looking. So before we go in with lips, I am going to go in with the CL blush in January one more time because it completely disappeared to see if we can get a little bit more out of it because there are blushes like that where the second application really sticks. And to be honest, that was something I experienced with like the cloud paints, but I really want some like pink local color here. <laughs> that maybe not that much that's kind of clowny but that's visible right we'll see that if it disappears if we'll notice a little bit on the forehead because you do you start to gaslight yourself you're like well maybe i just didn't put a visible enough amount on the first time it's like no Roll back the tape, it was there. I feel like that's good. That is a good amount of pink blush and we shall see over the course of the rest of the video whether it sticks around, okay? So this is different from this, right? This is the Kush Lip Oil and then this is the Odyssey Lip Gloss. What is the difference? Ooh, that smells delicious. This is just one that someone gave me, I think maybe Steph, because she had all of them and she's like, I'm not gonna use the clear. And I was like, if there's anything I'm gonna use, it's the clear. So that is the beauty of me and Steph's preferences is that they often dovetail. And then we have the Kush, which I did, you know, get in something fairly clear here just to, just to see. Yep, that's, they really, they really appear to be the same thing. Honestly, like what is the, milk makeup? I'm not gonna get on my soapbox here, but like they've confused me lately. Neither of them is like plumping or anything, sorry. We talked at length about those jelly blushes, this little guy right here, and how this was never designed to be something that was an elegant product to use. It was designed to be viral because it looks like candy and that I don't recommend you spending your money on it. So you can go back and watch that video, but I'm gonna use this, I mean, it's basically clear, right? It's just kind of apricot-y colored. I think that'll go well with what we've got going on, but I also don't think it's gonna show up that much. I don't have a lot of expectation here, but I do want to use my khaki lip liner because I have so darn many of them now and I'm very excited to have it back in my hot little hands. This is my khaki lip liner from Thrive. I did text Carissa. I was like, hey, how hard would it be to get the khaki color in this beautiful new lip gloss that y'all put out. I haven't heard back. <laughs> I'm gonna apply a lot and see if it feels good. I don't like the smell. That's cookie dough? It doesn't smell like cookie dough. It smells like they forgot to put the fragrance in there. It doesn't smell good at all, at all, at all. And not like, oh, I don't like the smell of cookie dough. Like it just doesn't smell good. It smells like the ingredients and that the ingredients are a little bit kind of bitter smelling. I mean, I know I said, if there's a clear lip gloss, I'm gonna use it and I'm not lying. And I'm glad that it's not like pH color changing so far, but I mean, that is just so neither here nor there. The whole appeal of it was that each one has a different taste and a different scent. And that was supposed to be just kind of like a fun little thing. And it's it's not, it's not, I, I honestly don't really want it on my lips because it it doesn't taste good and it smells bad. Let me try the other one, like just the regular clear one. I literally just unboxed it because I was like, why am I, you know, I just never got around to unboxing a clear lip gloss. Let's see. 
I don't like that at all. At least this smells fantastic. Kind of a little fruity. Ooh, and see that's thick. Thicker, it's not like crazy thick. Mmm, but it's so much plushier. One might even say cushier. Yeah, I don't really know what the appeal is of the cush. I mean, does it have CBD in it or something? I'm not sure, but like the Odyssey is way better. Way better. Like for just a clear freaking lip gloss. Don't make promises that you cannot keep, okay? So, I mean, a pretty straightforward face of makeup, but it's also a face of makeup that is probably pretty relatable to a lot of people. Not that many people are doing as many steps as a beauty guru on the internet in their everyday makeup routines. So as far as something that's going to simplify your routine and be something that looks very everyday, that's kind of the grounds on which I am judging the products that we tried today, mainly the foundations. And like, yeah, my face is dark, but it's not darker than my body. I just look really tan. I don't hate it. All right, so as much as I hate to just dismiss something out of hand, this just isn't it. This is not it, especially when something like this exists. I wanna compare the prices real quick. They're the exact same price, $44 each. This one you get 1.28 fluid ounces. This one you get 1.18 fluid ounces. I mean, it's negligible, but you do actually get more product in here. And I just think that this is a light years more sophisticated product, the CL, than the Super Goop, which is great news because this is the older product. There's a good chance that on my recommendation, some of y'all decided to buy this and you might be looking at this going well, but is it better? No, you can take it out of your cart. You can see a little bit of a difference. There are a lot of other products sitting on top of the makeup right now. So it doesn't look totally scientific, but like the way that all the makeup went on makes such a huge difference between the two of these because like this, the CL is blurred and this has, I want to say like some mica in it or something because it's adding this kind of faux luminosity to my skin that's highlighting my pores and it's highlighting my hyperpigmentation. I do think that the CL has slightly more coverage, but not to the point that it starts to look makeup-y. It's definitely still a skin tint, but it's just such a more sophisticated, subtly beautiful, effective complexion product. Like the formula is just outstanding, especially when the comparison here is just so obvious. They're both an SPF. 50 skin tint and they're both the same price and almost the same amount of product. Like it is very intuitive to compare these two things. And this is the absolute without a doubt winner, like instant winner and long-term winner. Cause I know I've used this so many times. So that's easy. <laughs> That's an easy thing to give y'all as far as information is concerned. And I would compare it to other skin tints. Like I love my Kosas, the BB Burst and stuff like that. But the whole thing here is that these have a heavy load of mineral sunscreen in them. Like this doesn't. And so that's why it's not apples to apples in that case. But like the CL kind of looks like the Prada on me. Like that's how blurring and pretty it is. It looks kind of like the Prada foundation on me. Not quite. The Prada is a little more coverage, but it's like a skin tint version. It's just really good. Now these blushes. I do think that we maintain some of the pink on the second apple application. But if you are a slam it on your face, walk out the door kind of person, you're going to be pretty disappointed because by the time you get on public transit, your blush is going to have disappeared. And unfortunately, these are kind of no different. I wonder if the reason that I like it more, like my whole look more now than I did right when I put the blush on is because June also had the chance to fade a little bit because it was muddy. As far as the colors are concerned, if they do work on you for some reason, if you don't have skin that just like eats blush, mine just eats blush apparently, then this is a mauve brown and bear that in mind. It's like a very cool toned brown and it can look muddy. So I would recommend it for people who have olive skin tones, cool skin tones, or if you want to use very, very little and if you already have cocoa from Salt New York, you probably don't need this. And this is also a very extreme shade. Not everybody wants this powder pink, but it is a nice thing to have when that's the mood you're in. Again, you know, talking about this the same way that I talked about it at the end of the year, the foundation is the star. The blushes are really pretty, but they're not perfect. That foundation is virtually, practically perfect in every way. I'm really glad that I had both of these. Like I said, this was a first impression on both. So I have the Odyssey lip oil gloss from Milk and then I have the Kush lip oil. I don't know why both exist, but like not only does this not look, smell, or taste like cookie dough, it actually doesn't feel that great on the lips and it doesn't smell very good or taste very good. Like it actually has like kind of a not nothing kind of taste to it. It's, it's a little bit bitter. It, it's unpleasant and I don't want to wear it again. But this is delightful. Cushiony 
and pretty and healthy and I will use it till it's gone kind of thing. It's a clear gloss that will happily be included in my stash and my collection going forward. Absolutely no problem saying that. It's really, really nice. So yeah, this just confounds me the same way that a lot of releases from Milk confound me. I'm sorry. That's such a read, but it's like, there's so much coming out of the milk makeup hive mind that I'm just so confused by. Because they come out with the Bionics, which were just unbelievably wonderful. But then they still doubled down on all those little cream sticks in the vault. And like, those are just kind of neither here nor there. It feels like a passe formula, like run with the Bionics. They put out those eyeshadow chalks. Now that is probably a lot longer ago than I feel like it was, but they were really not good. Y'all, these still exist. I am shocked. They were just really not good. <laughs> they were just kind of different for all the wrong reasons and really difficult to use and the colors were weird. It was it was a strange time for makeup, honestly. I think that that was 2020. I, we, no one knew what was going on, okay? We were just like, ah, uh, glitter chalk for your face, whatever. The mascaras? are the worst mascaras that I've ever used. They don't stay on for anything. No one is out here standing milk makeup mascaras. And while I love their sunshine skin tint, I have no idea why they still continue to have it in so much bulky packaging and so little product in the actual container. The concealer that goes with it is neither here nor there. And the concealer that they put out the like, the fluid, what they call it, like the cover fluid or whatever, that product is not good. That product is not good, at least for me. I found that product to not be good. And then we have this little number, feel about it how you will, but either way, I continue to try milk because I feel like they're just constantly like throwing things against the wall with utter confidence, just blind, unearned confidence. And we're all just like, sure, let's see, let's find out. And like, there's a lot of money going into sponsorships and having influencers use their stuff on camera. And of course, people who are very proficient at doing makeup tend to make that kind of thing look good, but these formulas are not easy. And they're certainly half-baked in some cases, like this is a pun on cookie dough. This is half-baked. Anyway, <laughs> I hope this was fun and valuable for y'all. We learned a lot here today together. And if you did enjoy this and found it valuable, please do give the video a thumbs up. If you're new here, I really need to start saying this in the beginning of the video, but I just get so excited when I use the makeup. Hi, I'm Khaki. This is what we do. We compare products. I have an encyclopedic collection that I know intimately, and I have way too much of my brain set aside for storage for so much information about all of these makeup products, mostly prestige and luxury, that this is my singular talent at this point, <laughs> is to be able to tell y'all whether something's actually good. And I seem to also be some kind of historian uh, of these things at this point. So anyway, if all that sounds good and a little bit of chaos sprinkled in, maybe a lot of bit of chaos sprinkled in depending on the day, then subscribe while you're here. And I love y'all, all my current subscribers. Thank you so much for being here. I will put a video up here that I think you'll enjoy if you liked this one. And I will, hopefully, see y'all in the next one. Bye!